and just want to share a little bit of a personal story. I was 12 years old uh, when the March on Washington occurred, growing up in the Five Points in Denver, Colorado, a predominantly African-American community that our family moved to uh, following their release from the Japanese-American internment camp Manzanar. It's a very poor community, very hard scrabble, very gritty, very tough, not unlike uh, the conversations that we are having today uh, at a time when our nation is at the greatest peak of inequality between the classes than it has been in many decades. So just like all of the speakers who have uh, so eloquently uh, provided their remarks before me, I think we all recognize that this march as a defining moment in many of our mutual histories and for those young people who were not alive or not born at that time, but have only seen the pictures and, and see the uh, repetition, uh, usually around Martin Luther King's birthday, uh, that we uh, remember this particular march. But I just want to rise today to say, and I may have said this before in another context when we recognize the Day of Remembrance in February, uh, the day that Executive Order 9066 was issued uh, that led to the internment of uh, my family and 110,000 other Japanese American citizens uh, in California. That I credit um, my growing up days in that gritty community in a predominantly African American neighborhood with my view of the world. Uh, growing up and looking at the inequality and through the prism of poverty as my family struggled to recover and seeing so many of my friends and neighbors in even more difficult circumstances than we found ourselves. And so it was really that growing up experience that led me to the choice of my profession, uh, the social work profession, which is allied not with the rich and the powerful, but always with those uh, who are the most vulnerable, oppressed, and living in poverty. And it is a choice that, you know, I don't think I could have made any other choice, uh, given the background and being riveted uh, to seeing the civil rights workers, you know, hosed down uh, by uh, public safety folks in those days. They were not friends in those days. They were part of the oppression. Uh, seeing the dogs unleashed on civil rights marchers and those who would fight to secure the right to vote for all of us, the right and the obligation to vote. And what I'd like to end with as we approach the 50th anniversary of the March on Washington this Wednesday, uh, I'd like to remind everyone that today is Women's Equality Day as well, when on August uh, 24th, or whatever, excuse me, August 26th, um, still back on the weekend, August 26, 1920, uh, women were finally given the right to vote 83 years ago. So I would enjoin all of you, all of my colleagues, whether Republican, Democrat, or wherever you are in between, that we continue to walk this journey of justice together. Uh, because it's only when all of us achieve our dreams that we can say we did our jobs and ensure that we bring people with us uh, because you know, we have a long way to go and we can only do this by bringing uh, those that are coming behind us, giving them that foundation uh, to achieve hope and justice for all. I ask for your I vote.